Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So what does it mean to be modest during the month of Shaban? What does that mean? <laughs> well, modest in the month of Shaban. Okay. Like I said, this is not theory, okay? I'm not here to dazzle you, to give you nice sounding words, nice ideas so that you go, wow. I'm here. First, what I eat and is good that I get from my sheikh, I try to share. Okay? What makes sense for me? You understand? Because the Prophet said to one says, the, the best kind of knowledge is what? The knowledge that you experience. So I'm going to tell you what I experience. You like it, you take it. There, it doesn't mean it's the only knowledge. There's so many other things to that too. But and the best kind of knowledge is the knowledge that benefits you, not knowledge that sounds really nice. I'm sick and tired of seminars and conferences and Zoom this, Zoom that. They can Zoom all the way to hell if they want. Now, what I'm saying in this month, to be modest. I look to see what my very bad, wrong characteristics are. Okay? Maybe it's making fun of Pakistanis, let's say, for example. Then, I'm going to be pulling that back a little bit. I'm going to be more shy about it, unless it's very necessary, of course. So I look at wrong characteristics that I have. Now, I'm not looking to see, okay, I have to pull back, otherwise I'm going to go to hell. You understand? I must stop doing these wrong things, otherwise I'm going to have more sin. I'm going to have no. I'm going to look at it from the point of what? Modesty. Modest to whom? To the Holy Prophet. Through his representative, through our Shaykh. I'm shy. It's not even a matter of, like I said, heaven or hell, punishment or reward. A shyness. If he's here, does it fit to his presence that I behave that way? I try to pull back. Now, what happens when you do that? When you are concentrating on modesty, instead of thinking, uh, is this in fiqh? Which book is this? Which ruling is this? Which scholar said this? What happens then? <clears throat> when you concentrate on modesty, you adapt your manners will increase. What does increasing your manners mean? You start understanding a little bit more of the subtleties, the nuances of situation, of people. Things are not just black and white, of course. Yes? The colors are not only seven. Now, if you look at the colors of Paradise Chef, and it says there are between 70,000 to 700,000 colors at any given moment, and it changes. So now, you have a little bit of modesty. You pull back, not because it's right or it's wrong. Okay? But it doesn't fit into that situation. Isn't that what is adept? What fits into that situation or not? In certain situations, it is good adept to be very polite. In certain situations, it's good adept to shout. If you're polite in that situation, it's wrong. This is understanding the nuances. They say, well, uh, how do you balance that? No, it's not about balancing. It's understanding what the context is. Understanding what the situation is. That is adab. Now in this situation, you have to be humble. In this situation, you cannot be humble. You have to show the majesty. We see. Yeah. Sheikh Ani used to be very critical of Muslim leaders. Yeah? going representing Islam, especially next to uh, priests and rabbis, 
and they're standing like pussycats. They don't dress like Muslims, number one. The priest and the rabbi look more like their own religion, the Muslim wearing suit and tie. Yeah? And they're standing like pussycats. Because they say, oh, we want to show the humbleness of Islam. That is the time you must show the majesty of Islam. Next to the believers, yes, that's time you come down a little bit. Be like them. I'm like this also because our guys are like this. We don't stand on ceremony so much. You understand? So that modesty in this month, this month, is important. Now, if you understand the modesty, then you understand when it is time for peace, it is peace. When it's time for fighting, it is fighting. When it's time to be quiet, it's to be quiet. When it's time to speak, you have to speak. When it's time to ask, you have to ask. When it's time to answer, you have to answer. So if you don't have modesty, you don't have that intelligence, everything is mixed up and you don't understand. Everything is a theory. So this is for me. Why is that important? Modesty. Because modesty, it is together with what? Faith. Modesty doesn't mean just being shy. Modesty is understanding what that situation is. You don't put yourself forward, but you study the situation. You understand? And when you're studying a lot, what do you become? You become intelligent, right? And isn't modesty, faith, and intelligence the three gifts that's given to Hazrat Yadam? Yeah. So this is the month that so many events happen to the Holy Prophet والسلام, and to all of the Ummah until the last days. This is the month that the Qibla was changed from Kudus to Mecca, to the Kaaba. This is the month, and that has so many uh, secrets in there. Why is in this month, the month of the Prophet? The Qibla changed. Are we understanding what it means? Changing back to what? The Qibla has always been the Kaaba, number one. But for the people of the book, it was Kudus. And the Prophet one says, now, we face, we are also people who have received the book, the Quran, and accepting the books. But now we must turn to our origin. And the original Kaaba, uh, Qibla, is the Kaaba Sharif. This is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself sent down that ayat. The ayat of what? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallin ala nabi. That ayat, verily Allah and his angels send salutations upon the Prophet. Oh, you who believe. Praise him with the highest praises. This is the month, the month of the Prophet. So many other events happen, of course. But if we look now, the specialness of the Holy Prophet, hmm, that Not only is he able to have all the most beautiful characteristics, but he also surrounds himself with the Sahabis who have beautiful characteristics that one is different from the other, but they're all beautiful. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the Prophet is able to go to battle and able to show mercy. He's able to be gentle, showing all of humanity how, as Allah is saying, we have given you a tremendous nature. 
And that tremendous nature is the example that the rest of humanity are following until the last day. And this changes, meaning all the beautiful characteristics. I'm not just talking about beauty of Jamal. I'm talking the beauty of Jalal also. That today, of course, they're trying to describe the Prophet as if he is, like Shaykh Hindi is saying, he's very, he's what? Uh, mm, uh, how you say? Huh? Shaykh Hindi was using specific words, but sometimes I use Shaykh Hindi's words and people jump at me also. What do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? They're showing him to be like a passive person. So I'm trying to push him to be like a, a Jesus kind. You understand? So things that don't fit into what people think he should be now, they put it aside. He was the most beloved one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as Shaykh he says, he's still a man. Of course, he's not a man like us. What kind of a man is he when he doesn't have a shadow? But he's a creature of Allahism and he's the most beloved. The most prized. Yet, in the most gentle, in the Rauf characteristics, in the Rahim characteristics that he has, he is also having that Jalal that when uh, he is in that situation when that Jalal is taking over him, Shaykh Hindi is saying, so many of the Sahabis, they don't even, they, can, they cannot even remember how he looks like physically because they never look up straight and to see his face. Because they're overwhelmed or in awe. But when he is in that Jalal situation, nobody dares to even move. So, One of the names of Allah is Malik, King, Sultan. Obviously, the Holy Prophet he is a Malik, he is a King. Without that title, he has the characteristics. And he is a Sultan. Without that title and without that, all that, uh, how you say, all that pomp and everything, but he has that authority, yes? But these two characteristics, especially in these days of Ahir Zaman, they put it aside. They concentrate, oh, don't you know? Um, he mends his own clothes, which he does, of course. He uh, washes his own, he does housework, this and that. Well, of course it does. You mentioned that, very good. But what about his other characteristics? Why are you not mentioning because it doesn't fit you. It doesn't fit the times that is dictated not by haq, but by batil in these last days. And the system is saying, no, no good if you mention that. So now we get a very unusual depiction of the Holy Prophet, So now what are people's aims for now? The alims and the ulamas and the shaykhs, what are they aiming for their people to be? What did Islam produce for 1400 years? Those who are running for haq and to bring justice into this world. And what have we produced since the fall of the Hilafat? Where take away all these qualities of the Prophet and you're left with something that uh, fits to your ego of these days. Something to think about. So yes, he is the most modest, the Holy Prophet said to us all. But Allah also dresses him with jalal. Yeah. How are we going to understand that when there are no Maliks ruling, there are no Sultans ruling? And all we hear about the Maliks and the Sultans, the Khalifas is how corrupted they are, how depraved they are, how everything negative. So things have to change. Hmm. 
it is not knowledge that we're looking for. We have to get rid of the wrong knowledge first. We have to unlearn. And then we have to relearn what the sheikhs, they say, empty the cup. Today, everyone comes in front of us with their cups filled to the brim. If they say something that doesn't fit into their understanding, they say, oh, something must be wrong. So, Allah protect us from that kind of ignorance, inshallah. And Allah give us that kind of knowledge that is going to give us benefit, the kind of knowledge that is going to give us more knowledge that is beneficial for us and for others and the knowledge that we can experience and taste. May Allah forgive me and bless you, inshallah, and raise the station of Shaykh Ahmed al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum.